More than 400 years ago, at the height of his powers, William Shakespeare sat down to write three plays for his company. These plays tell a story that still resonates today, a story of fathers and sons, friendship and betrayal, rebellion, insurgency and war. It's a story about a king who stole the crown and is tormented by guilt. It's about his son, a feckless young prince who is forced to grow up and face his destiny. Then, on succeeding to the throne, the new young king takes his country to war. He becomes the greatest warrior king in English history. Try God for Harry! England and St. George! It's a story of people facing an uncertain future and of a country searching for a new sense of patriotic identity. But Shakespeare being Shakespeare, these plays are also skeptical and ambiguous and somehow extraordinarily modern. In 1599, William Shakespeare's company had a problem that some of us might sympathize with. Their landlord refused to extend the lease of the site where their theater stood. Now, their theater was imaginatively called the theatre, and it was in Curtain Road, at that time, some way north of London. But the actors owned the theatre because they built it themselves. So, when their landlord was away, they dismantled the theatre and carried it piece by piece across the Thames and rebuilt it, rather like a giant kit, on the south bank of the river. The newly rebuilt theatre was called The Globe, and by all accounts, the first play to be performed here was Henry V. Not far from the original site of Shakespeare's reassembled globe is this modern replica. Sir Laurence Olivier's Oscar-winning 1944 film of Henry V opens as if the play were being performed in Shakespeare's newly built Globe Theatre at the turn of the 17th century. But the story of this King Henry starts almost...